great way glorify him little children yet a little while i am with you ye shall seek me and as i said unto the jews with that whither i go ye cannot come so now i say to you a new commandment i give unto you that ye love one another as i have loved you and that ye sh also love one another Hallelujah. Song says, Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Come on and clap your hands. Yeah. Whoa. Our Father.
your mercy and do it forever. Help me say, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Oh, people from every nation say. People from every nation say. Come on, rock from side to side. From generation to generation. Hey, say. We worship you. Hallelujah. Yes, you are, yeah. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are. So good, so good, yeah. So good, so good, yeah. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yeah. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. So good, so good, yeah. So good, so good. Say it again, say yes, you are, yes, you are, yeah. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are. Yeah, yes, you are. Yeah. so good, so good, yeah. So good, so good, yeah. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are. Come on, you are a good son. You are good all the time. All the time. Hey, yeah. All the time. You are good. You are good, yeah. Yeah. All the time. All the time. You are good. You are good. You are good. All the time. You are good. Yeah. 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 And I bless your name, yes I do, yeah. Oh, I, come on, repeat after me. Say he's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. So good. So yeah. good. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. So 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 good. your name there's nobody like you hallelujah one more time come on repeat after me say he's good he's good he's good he's good he's good so show up good he's good he's good he's good he's good he's good so show up 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 good Jesus, we say yes to your will. Hey, nobody like you, Jesus. We honor you today. Oh, people from every nation say, yeah. People from every nation and from generation to generation. We were, we were you. For the Lord is good. Hallelujah. He's so worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Lord, we say you're good. Lord, we say you're awesome. We say you're mighty. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Psalm says, Lord, you are good. You've been so good. You've been better than good. How many have a testimony that the Lord has been better than good? I just can't thank him enough. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, you are good. Yeah. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. 
I owe you my life Can't praise you enough Even if I tried Cause you've been So good oh, to me Help me say Oh, you Lord, you are good You've been so good so good. Lord, you, Lord, are, good. you are good. You've been better, You've been than, better than, 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 than I can good. praise you enough. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Can't praise you oh, enough. even if I try. Even if I try. Oh, so good. So good. Oh, to me. So good. You've been so good. Lord, you are, Lord, good. You are good. You've been better. You've been better than I can't good. praise I you can't enough. Praise you oh, enough. I owe you my life. I owe you my can't life. Can't praise you enough. Can't praise you enough. Even if I try. Yeah. Even if I oh, try. You've been so good. So good. To me, yeah. Peterson, let's say amen for him amen. as he comes. All right. 
right, so this time I'd like to welcome the church. <laughs> All right. I'd like to welcome our visitors and the people online. So if we have any visitors, I ask you to please stand so that you can be acknowledged. Have any visitors today? Hey, Amen for you, brothers and sisters. Well, this time we will have um, a song following a prayer. So I like to, you know, I just like to pray that this service goes smoothly. And that's all I like to say. Amen. Amen. service online we ask you that our prayer today is that they meet you in a special way in Jesus name amen, amen. next we're going to have our announcements it's going to be coming from brother Jordan Peterson let's say amen for him as he comes Please direct your attention to the screens. to celebrate 
Don't be a ski spirit. Come on, little kid. Right here at 18. These have been your Sunday highlights. Ski nets at 18. Elder Coffey and Sister Monique would like to meet with all ministry and auxiliary leaders immediately following service today. Matter of importance. Thank you. Amen. At this time, we're going to hear from the children's choir. Let's say amen for them as they come.
youth another hand. Are y'all enjoying the youth on today? Amen, amen. Just to add on concerning for the program tonight, 6 o'clock, amen, if you don't have the college jersey, wear a shirt, t-shirt, sweater, whatever, jacket, whatever, just, amen, just uh, do that on tonight. We're excited on for tonight. But other than that, we're going to go for, at this time, we're going to call our pastor. He's going to come. At this time, we're thanking God, amen, for our pastor, Pastor Kellen Brooks, amen, allowing the young people to go forth. Amen. We thank God for him. So at this time, let's say amen for him as he comes. Thank God for our pastor. Come on, let's clap our hands and give Jesus Christ some praise today. And let's give these young people another hand. Amen. You can take your seats. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Are you glad to be in God's house today? I said, are you glad to be in God's house today? Amen. Amen. And yes, I'm excited about this evening. March Gladness uh, Youth Service tonight, 6 p.m. And this is the relaunch of our youth ministry under some new management. 
the elder and evangelist, Barksdale. Amen. And evangelist Mary, she's bringing the word today. We're excited about that. Amen. Amen. We're really looking forward to that. And uh, they had a great time on last night. Uh, they had a time of fellowship. They went to Dave and Buster's. And Woo! all the young people that went, make some noise. Amen. Amen. Good stuff. They're shy today. Amen. Lord bless them. But we're so glad to have uh, a pair of leaders who are concerned about young people and have a strategy and plan to win young people. And so we're excited about that. And we're looking forward uh, to seeing this grow and thrive. And it's our desire, as the calendar allows, to give the young people a Sunday night every single month. Amen. Every single month. So they'll have a time for fellowship, a time to gather, uh, a time to have worship that is on their level, which is part of our strategy. That's part of our, let's find it, let's find it, let's, Amen. let's find it, let's integrate it and age appropriate Beautiful. worship. Amen. Today is integrated, old and young and in between, but tonight is age appropriate, Amen. geared towards the young people, the sermon geared towards the young people. And, and that's our focus is to really build up a generation that knows the Lord God. And, you know, there is no junior Holy Ghost. Amen. Young people can be filled with the Spirit. Amen. There's no junior Bible. Young people can know the Word. And on last night, uh, I went to Southwest Number 2, their jurisdictional youth night, and they had two young men uh, who got up to speak. They were about 10 or 11 years old. Brilliant. Just, just brilliant minds. And they had some Q&A. And so I asked one of them, what books is he reading these days? And he told us that he's reading The Miseducation of the Negro. I said, I think I need to go back and read that one or go and read it, period. You know, what 11-year-old is reading that kind of material? Brilliant mind. And let me tell you, young people, you're no different. You're no different. When you apply yourselves and, and, and really put in the time you can develop your mind and become something great. And it's really going to take the part of the parents to help that happen. Because kids, they don't, they don't do this on their own. They need some guidance. They need some priding. They need direction. And even if they don't feel like it, you make them do it. Make them do it till they want to do it. And they'll thank you in the long run. So I'm excited about what God is doing in the life of our young people here. Amen. And we're going to bless the Lord in our giving at this time. Amen. I'm going to bless the Lord in our giving. We believe the word of the Lord. The word gives us an instruction. It says to honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of all of your increase. You never lose out when you invest financially into the work of the Lord. Where your treasure is, the Bible says, that's where your heart will be also. And when your heart is into something, you want to give into that thing. You want to pour into that thing. Amen. And so uh, we ask you that if you have not yet started to trust the Lord with his tithe and your offering, that this year you would go beyond. That is my desire uh, for you, to go beyond. You know, what giving does, um, giving really has a threefold purpose. Giving has an upward purpose. When you give, you're being obedient uh, to what God has instructed you to do. The Bible says that it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. It says that we should lay in store the first day of the week of how God has prospered us. So there's an upward part to giving. There's an outward part. When you give, it directly blesses another person. Somebody is directly impacted by your generosity. In a world where people are skeptical, we need more generous people. People by nature are miserly and, and stingy. And uh, I know I'm a frugal person. Amen. I am a frugal person. I like to save my money and spend it on what I want. And uh, if I see something on the ground, I'm picking it up. I don't despise dimes and quarters and nickels and pennies. Amen. But when you give, it does something to your heart. 
it frees you from stinginess. It frees you from covetousness. It frees you from greed. So as you're giving today, you're not just putting a, some dollar bills into a basket. You're not just filling out an envelope, but you're doing something very spiritual today. You're blessing God. You're blessing his ministry, and you are increasing the fruit of your own righteousness. So we got a young person that's, that's going to pray, but I want to pray a special prayer for you as we prepare our hearts to give. Father God, I thank you that you have invited us into this incredible opportunity, and that is to bless you in our giving. Lord God, your word says that we know the grace, the generosity of our Lord Jesus Christ, and that though he was rich, yet for our sakes, he became poor, that we through his poverty might be rich. So Jesus, we thank you for how generous you were. You poured out of yourself. You gave up your entire life, shed your blood so that we could be made righteous. And today, God, we wanna participate in that act of generosity giving financially to the work of the Lord. We thank you for the souls that are going to be helped. We thank you, God, for those that are struggling that are going to be lifted up. We thank you, God, that this church and this ministry shall never lack, but you will equip us to do more than we've ever done because of a heart of generosity. We bless you for this. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. And I don't want to rob the young person, but I want to pray that special prayer over you that God would increase your faith as you begin to give. The moment you decide you're going to give and I'm going to sacrifice, the enemy starts working against you. He tries to give you every excuse and every reason not to give. But I'm going to tell you, you can't afford not to give. God is going to bless for your obedience. Brother Jason is coming. Please stand for prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this Youth Sunday and for the many blessings that you continue to give us daily. Now we ask that you bless this offering, bless our congregation, and those that have to give and those that don't. Let this offering be used for your glory. In your son, in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Follow the direction of your ushers. Amen. If you want to give by credit or debit card, you can come to my right, your left. Those that are watching online, you may give at ptchurch.net or you may text to give. And that information is on your screen. The choir is going to give us a selection. Let's bless the Lord in our giving. Dance before the Lord. Dance before the 
Amen. Thank you for your generosity this morning. And uh, glad to have a guest with us today. This past weekend, we had our International Youth Department Youth Leadership Woo! Summit. It took place Friday night and Saturday morning. And so we were glad to host uh, young leaders and youth leaders all over the U.S., as far as California, as far east as Boston, Massachusetts. And they were gathered here uh, for training and for leadership. And so one of the young ladies that serves alongside me in Mid-North Global Region as the youth chair lady, uh, she is worshiping with us today. And so I'm glad that I don't have to do ministry alone on that scale, but there are great men and women of God that God has placed uh, to help us do ministry on a great level. And so uh, I didn't give her any, any heads up or clue or anything, but I think it would be wonderful if Chair Lady Monique Campbell uh, would come and greet us all the way from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Let's say amen for her. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. I bring you greetings from Trinity Church of God in Christ in a little city called McKeesport, Pennsylvania. Amen. Where my pastor is none other than Bishop James Miles Foster. Amen. And my first lady is Evangelist Martha Foster. Amen. I honor God. I thank God for this opportunity. I honor Pastor Brooks. Amen. District Missionary Karen. Amen. I honor you. And I honor the life and the legacy of Bishop King. Amen. I remember the last time I was here, I got to hear him speak. And I thank God that I had that opportunity just to hear the wisdom that came out of him. Amen. And you all have an amazing legacy. Amen. To the young people, I encourage you all, if you don't know God, get to know God. And if you know God, get to know God more. Amen. Amen. I'm coming from a city where a 17-year-old black man was just killed by police officers. He was shot three times, you know, and they just found the police officer not guilty. So I'm going back home to young people protesting and being in the streets, you know, but God is our protector. Amen. God is our healer, and I know God is going to work things out. You all pray for me as I go back home that God would use me and that I could be the, the instrument that he needs for these young people. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you so much for coming and joining with us. And I'm going to turn it back into the hands of our, here he comes. Amen. Our youth director, Elder Jamel Barksdale. Uh, you know, I'm going to let him present the speaker. He knows her a little better than I do. And so he's going to introduce the speaker at this time. <laughs> thank you, Pastor. Amen. We thank God, amen, for this young lady, amen. Uh, she just didn't get saved yesterday or last month or last year. Amen. She's been saved. Amen. She, she was uh, younger, and I thank God for her. Amen. Honestly, I'm, 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 I'm really mean what I'm getting ready to say, where she is truly my dream girl. And the reason I say that is because, you know, when you're young, you say a lot of stuff you don't remember. And when, it, when, I, when I was a teenager, I wouldn't utter the word marriage to anybody. And my mother told me, she said, yeah, when you was like 17, you said that Mary Hollis was going to be your wife. Oh, no, not me. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so when I got saved, you know, I was hoping she was still available. And when God said it was time for me, she was still available. I was like, yes. <laughs> but I'm, I'm saying that because her, she had an attractive anointing. In other words, she loved God. She just loved God, and she loved young people, and she loved ministry. I mean, she's, she's just awesome. Like I said, those of you here that have got to know her, she's just awesome, just sweet, and she just loves the Lord. And I just thank God, amen, for her awesome wife, awesome mother, awesome sister. I mean, and y'all, and, and of course, she still does hold the record for the most beautiful woman in the world. So keep that in mind. But as I present her, I do ask you all just to be prayerful. Uh, as she come, I just thank God for her and for her anointing. And I'm just looking for her to go forth. And you all just sit and enjoy. Amen. Young people, listen up. Uh, middle age, listen up. Older, listen up. Amen. Because she does have a word. So we're just thanking God at this time. So let's say amen as she comes. If you can stand out of respect, amen. Evangelist Mary Louise Barksdale. Let's say amen for her as she comes. 
Well, Ezekiel said he saw him in the wheel in the middle of a wheel. John talked about him in the book of the seven seals. Some say the Rose of Sharon, others say the Prince of Peace, but I call Jesus my rock. Well, Ezekiel said he saw him in the wheel in the middle of a wheel. John talked about him in the book of the seven seals. Some say the Rose of Sharon, others say the Prince of Peace, but I call Jesus my rock. Call him Jesus my rock. Call him Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. I call Jesus my rock. Well, Ezekiel said he saw him in the wheel in the middle of a wheel. John talked about him in the book of the seven seals. Some say the Rose of Sharon, others say the Prince of Peace, but I call Jesus my rock. Call him Jesus, 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 call him Jesus. Oh, Jesus, 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 I call Jesus my rock. One more time. Well, Ezekiel said he saw him in the wheel in the middle of a wheel. John talked about him in the book of the seven seals. Some say the Rose of Sharon, others say the Prince of Peace, but I call Jesus my rock. Call him Jesus. Call him Jesus, come on Jesus, oh Jesus, 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 I call Jesus my rock, hallelujah, 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 you see your rock on today, hallelujah, hallelujah, he is my strength, he is my fortress, he is my all in all, he is my rock on today, hallelujah, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah! 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I give honor on today. You may be seated. Amen. I give honor on today. Amen to my pastor. Amen, Pastor Brooks. Amen. I thank God for this opportunity. Amen. To share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I thank God for um, Mother Askins. I just thank God for each and every one, amen, that is here on today. I thank God for my husband. Amen. I thank God for my husband, Elder Barksdale, my children. Amen. 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 Word of prayer. Lord, word my mouth. Amen. Give me what to speak and what to say with clarity and with boldness. Amen. Open the hearts of the minds of your people, O oh God, on today. Open their ears. Give them understanding, O oh God, of your word and of your will for their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We're going to be talking about today, um, we're going to be talking about the book. Um, it's a familiar passage of scripture. Amen. It's Ephesians 6. Amen. We're going to be talking about the armor. Amen. Amen. Pastor's been talking about heaven. He's been talking about hell. He's been talking about the angels. He's been talking about the demons. But we have to be equipped. Amen. To fight. Amen. So we're going to be talking about the armor of God being ready for battle. Amen. We're going to be talking about being ready for battle. Amen. And I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. Amen. It was this uh, movie that, I've, that I saw. I can't remember exactly the name of it, but it was on Pure Flix. Amen. And um, it was this um, guy. He, he wasn't sure of... Um, of it, it, okay, there was a situation that occurred in a store, and um, he didn't know which way to turn. It was some people coming in, coming to rob, and um, he didn't know 
uh, what to do or what, you know, what to do in the situation because he was defenseless. And um, prior to his um, history, prior to, he was in the army, amen, and he, um, whatever it was that triggered, amen, triggered his mind, amen, he got in that train of thought. And he began to uh, defeat the different ones that were around him, uh, just one person, but he was able to defeat the different ones that were around him, amen, and different ones were saying, how did you do that, how did you do that? Because it was just one man, but he didn't have any weapons or anything. He just used his hands, he used what he knew, amen, and that's what we're gonna talk about, the armor, knowing, using what you have, amen. Amen, the Bible says, in 10th chapter, Ephesians 6, 10th chapter. I'm sorry, 10th verse. 6th chapter, 10th verse. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil days, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparations of the gospel of peace. Above all, take on the shield of faith, faith, wherewith you should be able to quench all the fiery darks of the wicked, and the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching unto, and watching unto for all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Amen. Amen. I'm a, um, the word finally, amen. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It didn't say be strong in what you think. It didn't say be strong in your opinion. It didn't say be strong in your own strength. It said be strong in the Lord. Amen. Be strong in the Lord and in his power, in his might. Amen. We, we, uh, the Bible says in Proverbs 3 and 5, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. Amen. Amen. Chapter, verse 11, it says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now that word put on, amen, the word put on gives us, lets us know that it's something that we have to do. It, let, it lets us know that it's something that we are going to make an effort in, something that we're going to have to do ourselves. He gave it to us. God gave us the equipment, but it says put on. So we have to do it. We have to know who we are and whose we are, and we have to put on, amen, that we can stand firm in our place, that we can stand and hold our ground against the strategies, against the schemes, against the tricks of the enemy. We have to put on, amen, the whole armor of God. Amen, the 12th verse, it says, for we, for we west wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It didn't say my brother and my sister. It didn't say the person on your job. It said spiritual wickedness in high places. So we have to get to the root of the problem. The root is not the English teacher that gives you a hard time. The root is not the spouse that we, with which we fight over something simple as toilet tissue. Is it supposed to go over or is it supposed to go under? That's not the root. 
The root isn't your boss that doesn't like you just because. The root is not the classmate that bullies you because they see greatness in you. Because that's the reason why, because they see it in you. The root is not that. The problem, the root is Satan. He comes to kill, he comes to steal, and he comes to destroy. That is the root. So we have to get to the root, amen? Amen, and when we realize that who, that is the enemy working in our family, working in friends, working in the community, working in our schools, Apostle Paul says in verse 13, therefore take unto you the armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil days and having done all to stand. The armor of God is a gift. Amen. It is a gift that God has given us. Amen. So that we may be able to stand our ground against the schemes and the wickedness of the enemy. 14, it says, therefore, gird up your, lo gird up your loins with truth. Amen. The truth is considered as a belt. Apostle Paul wanted us to, uh, Apostle Paul, he also um, compared Amen. The armor to the armor of the Roman soldiers. Amen. And he's had the belt, which represents truth. Amen. And it's described for, for saints for battle. Amen. The belt is very important. The belt is very important. Amen. The first thing that the Roman soldiers put on was the belt. Amen. Because the belt kept, kept, kept everything in place. Amen. And without the belt, the armor is not effective. Amen. It's the anchor. Truth, amen, is the anchor. Amen. Truth is, it is the anchor. Amen. And it also holds the sword of the spirit, which is our foundation. Amen. But truth is, it's the foundation on which we build our faith on. Amen. Amen. It says, gird up, your, gird up your loins, amen, with truth. It says, fasten. It's talking about fasten all around you. Okay, the, King, the New King James Version says, having girded, your, having girded your waist with truth. The Amplified Bible says, having tightened the belt of truth around your loins. King James says, Having your loins girt about with truth. The New International Version says, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. So no matter what translation, amen, you want to use, no matter what translation you preference, amen, the main thing is to hold the belt all the way around you, to hold truth all the way around you, amen, that you may use it in the time that it is needed, amen? Amen. Without knowing and understanding the truth, you could believe anything. You could believe anything. According to Ephesians 4 and 4, it says we are tossed away with every wind and every doctrine. Amen. Without truth, we could believe anything. in anybody says because we could be tossed away. Amen. With every wind and every doctrine. But when we know the truth, according to John 8 and 30. 8 and 32, it says, the truth will make you free. Amen. How many people want to be free on today? Amen. So what is truth? What is truth? What is truth? John 3 and 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Truth. John, John 14 and 6, God said, I am the, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but through me. Truth. Ephesians 4 and, 4 and, um, excuse me, Ephesians 4 and uh, 13 says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Truth. Without, <clears throat> excuse me, thank you, Lord. <clears throat> if it wasn't for the love of God, if it wasn't for grace, where would we be? Truth. 
Amen. Amen. And 14, it said, the rest of 14, it says, having put on your breastplate of righteousness. Ephesians 4 and 7 is talking about guarding your heart. Guarding your heart. Where the breastplate is, is at your heart. It covers your heart. Amen. And your heart is a very important organ. Amen. And with one strike of your heart, someone could die. Amen. But the Apostle Paul compares righteousness to the breastplate where your heart is. I heard someone say, and it really blessed me, it said the righteousness is right side living, right upside living that invites God's favor and blessings. Unrighteousness is upside down living that invites the enemy to come in and make him make himself at home. So we want to be righteous to let God's presence in, to let God's favor in, to let the blessings of God overtake us. Amen. Amen. Righteousness is living our life alignment with God. The truth is affirming God's standard. So righteousness is aligning yourself with God. And truth is affirming God's standard. So many times we say we love Jesus. Amen. So many times while we're in church, we say we love Jesus. I give all my all to him. But when we leave out those doors, we, leave, we live any kind of way that is not pleasing unto God. So we must gird ourselves with truth and righteous living. Amen. And not the righteous, not talking about self-righteousness. Not of our own self. That's not the righteousness I'm talking about. I'm not talking about our own self, because remember I told you about that um, belt, and that belt holds up. It holds up the breastplate. And if, and, and if we are living, our, living ourselves with self-righteousness, we're weighed down. Because we don't have the truth. We don't have the belt. We're being weighed down because of our own self-righteousness. But when we have the belt of truth. Amen. We know who we are. We know whose we are. So it's the righteousness of God, not of ourself. I just want to make that sure. I make that clear. Amen. Amen. And 15, it says, for um, having your feet shod with the preparations of the gospel of peace. Amen. Always needed is the right pair of shoes. You always need Amen. The right pair of shoes. Amen. Whatever the event is, if you're running a race, you need race gym shoes, track shoes. Amen. Amen. You always need the right pair of shoes. And what the shoes is, is readiness. It's readiness. You're able to, to move around. You're able to maneuver. You're ready for battle. It's readiness. Amen. And readiness tells you of the good news of Jesus Christ. First Peter 3 and 15 says, but sanctify the Lord God in your heart and always be ready to give an answer to every man that ask a man a reason of the hope that lies within you with meekness and fear. Amen. With meekness and fear. So we always have to make sure we have the right pair of shoes on. Amen. Amen. And 16th verse, it says, Above all, take on the shield of faith, where would you be able to quench all the fiery darks of the wicked? Amen. God gives us a measure of faith. Amen. He gives us a measure of faith. And the Bible talks about mustard seed faith. Amen. I always wonder, why a mustard seed? Why not, uh, uh, you know, any other kind of seed? Why? Why? Why mustard seed? Amen. Then I begin to study what mustard seed, what, what a mustard seed is. Amen. It's the smallest seed on earth. And it says, when it's planted, hear that, when it's planted in the right soil, when it's planted, amen, faith planted in the right soil, it becomes the largest 
garden plant. Amen. And most people talk about how small the seed is. But I'm talking about the impact that the seed has. Amen. God gives us all a measure of faith. And as we walk with him and our faith grows and grows and it develops until it becomes a shield. And it protects, the shield protects us and allows us to live victoriously in Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Galatians 2 and, and, um, 2 and 20, it says, not I, but the Christ that liveth in me. Not I, but the Christ that liveth in me. So when the devil comes, and he will come, amen, when he comes with, with any kind of lie or any kind of uh, deception or schemes, amen, we'll have our shields up and ready. Amen. For when the devil comes, we can just put up our shield. Amen. Amen. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. And the, the 17th verse, it says, take unto you the helmet of salvation. The helmet, it protects the brain. Amen. A renewed mind. Amen. That reminded me of a renewed mind. Of Romans 12 and 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Somebody say attitude check. Attitude check. Amen. Salvation. Amen. It's powerful. It's power is the cross. Amen. And Satan has no longer have a hold on you when you receive salvation. Amen. Satan becomes powerless. Amen. And, and whatever his traps are set for you, you won't, you won't fall for them because he is powerless. Amen. And the rest of 17, it says, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of of God. The word is power living. Powerful living. Amen. That's the word. Hebrews 4 and 12, it says, for the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the divide of soul and spirit, and the joints and morals and a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Powerful. Powerful. The word is powerful. Amen. The word, it protects and it also destroys the enemy's attempts. So it's powerful. It protects and it destroys the enemy's attempts and temptations. 18 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication, being watched, uh, being watched, watchful to, being watchful to the, at the end of perseverance and supplication, amen, for all saints. Amen. When you put on these clothes and put on these garments, amen, you also need to have prayer. You need prayer. Prayer is what? Communication with God. Fellowship with God. That's what prayer is. Amen. And prayer does not manipulate God. It's not a manipulator. Prayer gives you access. It gives you access. So it's not a manipulator, but it gives you access. They say prayer is the keys to the kingdom. And faith unlocks the door. Prayer is the key to the kingdom. And faith it unlocks the door. So when we season things with prayer, amen, when we, when we garnish it, amen, with prayer, and prayer in, God, in God's will, not just prayer, but pray in his will, amen, things will happen. You will become victorious, amen, in whatever situation that you may face. Amen. The Apostle Paul wants us to know that with the belt of truth, with the breastplate of righteousness, with our, with our feet, 
amen, uh, with the gospel of peace, with the shield of faith, with the helmet of salvation, and with the, with the, word, with the sword of the spirit covered in prayer. We are equipped to defeat the enemy. We are equipped, amen, to, to, to ignore whatever the enemy brings towards our door, amen, because we are ready for battle, amen, we are ready for battle. And Romans, one of my favorite scriptures, Romans 8 and 38 through 39, it says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I'm going to say that one more time. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, equipped for battle. We have to be equipped for this warfare. Amen. The devil's not playing with us. He's not playing. So we have to be equipped. We have to have our armor on. We have to have our head covered. We have to have our heart covered. We have to have on truth. We have to have on our feet shouting with the preparations of the gospel of peace. Because God, because the devil is not playing with us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He's not playing. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we have to be equipped. Amen. We have to be equipped for this warfare. Amen. Bless you. Hey, man, come on. We can do better than that. Let's praise God for the word. Amen. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for that word. And Lord God, we know that we are in a spiritual battle. God, we pray today that every person under the sound of my voice, every young person, every adult would be equipped for battle, that we put on the whole armor of God, that we put on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, Lord God. Let righteousness be in the inward parts today. God, righteous when somebody's looking and righteous when nobody's looking. We thank you for salvation today, God. Thank you for stability in your word. Thank you for the gospel of peace. Thank you for the sword of the spirit, the word of God. And we thank you, Lord God, for heart to pray without ceasing. Lord Jesus, let us use these spiritual weapons today and not be governed by the flesh, but directed by your spirit. If you're not saved today, and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to give your life to Jesus because you can't do this in the flesh. We can't be made right on our own, but we need the blood of Jesus Christ and our lives. And you are never too young to give your life to Jesus Christ. I gave my life to Jesus when I was five years old. I realized that I needed a savior. And if God can save a five-year-old, God can save you. So everybody's standing, all the young people standing as well. Amen. And we're going to open up the altar today for anybody that desires prayer. And, and after that prayer, we're going to do a special prayer for all of the young people that are here today. But right now, if anybody desires prayer, we want you to come forward and we want to pray for you. Whatever it is you have need of, let us touch and agree with you. And while these are coming, we want to say a special prayer for some of our members that are ill. I lift my hands and toes a laboration unto you. You reign on the throne 
for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. Sing it one more time. Say, I love you. I love you, Jesus. And I worship and adore. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Say, I love you, Jesus. I love you. I worship and adore you, just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Said, I love you, Jesus, I love you, Jesus, and I worship I Tell you, Just tell you, Lord, I love you. out there today and you don't have a church home, I believe this is the greatest church in the world, Pentecostal Temple. Amen. And if you want to join this fellowship in your program, there is a connection card. And you can fill out that card and indicate that you want to make this your church home. And we thank God for those that have joined on this year as part of our family and our family is growing. Amen. And we want to receive you in and and we're going to be a blessing to our speaker right now. Amen. Amen. And as we're doing that, you can put that connection card in the basket, and we're going to connect with you and pray with you. And uh, we thank you for your prayers as we're developing uh, an online new members course. We have recorded all of the video for it. And so we are one step closer to actualizing that goal. We want to be able to assimilate as many people as possible in the most convenient ways and so I'm excited about what God is doing. One more hand for Sister Mary Barksdale. <laughs> Amen. And once again, tonight, 6 p.m., March Gladness. Wear your sports attire. The young people are going to be going forth next door. And so we're looking forward to that. Uh, I don't think this was in the plan. It was food in the plan for 6 o'clock. Let, let's, come on, let's just throw some pizzas in there. Why not? Why not? Let's do that. And uh, so you can come get a word and get some food. Amen. And we're going to be a blessing to our young people. I want you to get an offering in your hand. Uh, we're going to be a blessing uh, to this youth ministry. Uh, we know that ministry takes money. And so uh, it's, you know, we can't, we can't see we want to win our young people and then not put any money behind it. Amen. And so we want to be a blessing. 
Of course, as always, if you want to give our credit or debit cards, you can come forward. And all others, just go ahead and pass that offering uh, down to the center aisle. Hey, man, you can come on forward and we expedite our time a little bit. Amen. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to give. Bless the gift and the giver. Thank you, God, for the ministry of the Barksdales. May it thrive and prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. The ushers are coming to collect that offering. Everybody say blessed, 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 blessed. Everybody say blessed, 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 blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the fields. We're blessed when we come, when we go. Sickness and poverty in the streets, for the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Everybody, she blessed. Blessed, 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 Amen. These young people are singing tonight. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again for your generosity. Special announcement coming from Mother Atkins at this time. Yes, yes. Didn't you enjoy the young people today? Amen. Amen. They put their all into the service. We thank God because if it wasn't for young people, the church would die. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. Let's give them a round of applause. Praise God. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you also, Sister Barksdale, for such a beautiful message today. Praise God. I know it's your first time up, and we kind of shake it, but just relax yourself. You're in the house of God where people love you. Praise God. We thank God for service today. This is anniversary time. This is anniversary time. And Mother Logan is here with her song today. Man. Anniversary time. Mother Logan, would you like to lead us in that song? <laughs> it's anniversary time. It's anniversary time. We are truly glad. It's anniversary time. Deep in my heart of mine, I want my love to shine. We are truly glad. It's anniversary time. That's all right, Mother. That's all right. Praise God. We thank God for this time of the year that we can be a blessing to the man of God. And we want to do our very best. We want to sing to the glory of God. Praise God. And we want to give our little talks. And if you just want to give a little dance, you can too. Praise God. And we have company coming. We have Bishop 
uh, Whitehead coming to be with us in his congregation. And we're going to have a glorious time. But we don't want you to come empty-handed. You know, I think maybe we kind of, those of us that are older, we kind of put things away for special occasions so that we can be a blessing. And he has blessed us for one more year. And we don't want to hold back. We don't want to hold back. We want to make him happier this year than he was last year. Yeah. Praise God. And we're going to do just that. We're thanking you for your cooperation. Right after service today, I'd like to meet with every department leader. Every department leader. leader, Because there's some things I'd like to discuss with you. And uh, thank you so much for your patience. I know everybody's ready to go home. Praise God. But we had to take this time. So to let you know that on next Sunday, we will be celebrating four years under the leadership of Pastor Isaac Kellen Brooks. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. All right. One hundred dollars. God, yes, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you once again for your generosity. I do appreciate it. Uh, last year, I did. I made a pledge, a financial pledge, and that's going to help me get to that goal. Amen. To bless our church. Uh, these names we're going to be praying for: uh, Mother Essie Heyman, uh, Mother Reed. Oh, she's here. What am I talking about? Amen. Last, last we were here, she was in the hospital unconscious, but look what the Lord has done. Amen. Amen. My God's a healer, isn't he? Amen. Amen. We're praying for Mother Heyman. And I received word uh, that uh, one of our speakers that we had about a month ago, Dr. Leonard Lovett, uh, that he is in the hospital and extremely ill. And so uh, we want to be praying for him and uh, lifting he and his wife up in prayer uh, that God would turn it around. That God would turn it around. When he came to us, he was a little under overcoming pneumonia, but they said that it came back. Uh, but we know that pneumonia is no uh, hard thing for God. And so, Father God, we lift them up before you right now. We rebuke the attack of the enemy. We rebuke the spirit of infirmity. Lord God, send an angel of healing right now to the hospital rooms and to the beds of these saints of God. We believe that you are a healer. To those who fear you, shall the son of righteousness rise with healing in his wings. We praise you today, Lord God, for deliverance power. Thank you for healing power. You sent your word and you healed them. Your word says that you laid hands on the sick and they would recover. And so, Father, we speak recovery now in the name of Jesus. We speak deliverance now in the name of Jesus. Complete healing and deliverance. And we call it done in Jesus Christ's name. Thank God. Amen. Amen. We're going home. We're early today, 12.04. Amen. So we're going to stand at this time. Amen. We're going to have... Young brother Joe Mo, he's gonna dismiss us. Let's say amen for him. Heavenly Father, please let bless us as we leave. Please let us go home safely. Please let us go home in our finances. Please let us be safe. Please let us have. Please let us go home safely. And please bless our children. Please, please bless the grown ups. And please bless the pe people that's in the and a uh, hospital. Please bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. God bless you.